Today, as, uh, as I mentioned last week, we will uh, talk about paper and uh, its uh, degradation. So the aging of paper, what happened to, to the paper, what we can see, and how we can read the signs of time on the paper. And then we will analyze our papers uh, I brought my microscope so we can see the fibers of the paper. Uh, I don't know if you ever uh, had a look uh, so close to the fibers. You ever used a microscope? Never. Okay. So we will see how to observe paper with different lights. And this is also useful for what Alicia will say after me. Uh, because the observation of the object on, of the surface is very important and it, it is something that you, you will learn. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a too short time to learn uh, really to be expert on the observation but it's not something that you normally do. It's something that you have to learn how to observe the surface of the object, the material and how it behaves by the time. Uh, so, for example, this is uh, something that I say all the time. When I go to an exhibition as a conservator, I have this uh, very critical eye. So my observation uh, goes beyond the, the work of art. Uh, I don't look at the work anymore. I look at the damage of the work. <laughs> so that's the first thing I see, uh, unfortunately. So this is something that happens when you are a conservator. Um, and then you can appreciate the work <laughs> after, after the analysis of the damage, you know, of the work. Uh, so this is something that we will try to, uh, to, to teach you uh, during this week. And we will uh, then uh, um, analyze different kind of materials uh, which are good for conservation, so to be in contact, direct contact with the work. We will talk about preventive conservation, which is something that um, um, Ginevra anticipated last week uh, on Friday. Uh, so today, we'll start with the paper analysis. So as I said, we will look at the fibers after my, my lecture, and uh, we will observe the differences between the, the, uh, the size of the fibers and the distribution on the paper. So some papers are thinner, some are thicker. We will observe all these differences. I, I will not go deeper inside the, the chemistry of paper, but sometimes <coughs> probably we'll be, we'll, we'll, we will need to understand more. Uh, so I will uh, mention something about the, the composition of paper. Okay, so what to observe and uh, to take in mind while observing the paper? The raw materials, we, we say the paper is made of different kind of fibers, different kind of plants, so we will have different kinds of paper depending according to the composition, so the, the plant uh, which is generated from. And then the methods uh, of paper making can make big difference uh, we see, we use the different kind of molds, uh, we beat the pulp or we can use the machine. So this will change the last product, so the result of our process. Uh, another um, thing to keep in mind is the coating of paper. Because we haven't made this, uh, I think, we haven't sized the, we haven't used glue on the paper, but you can add some sort of glue or additives uh, to the process. So you can add, uh, uh, yes, a kind of uh, adhesive inside the vat, or you can add um, sizing, so glue, on top of the paper when it's ready and it's dried. Okay, and this will change the appearance, uh, uh, the, even for the use of the paper, you can have more waterproof surface using the, the, the glue on top of the paper. So this is called coating. And uh, you have also uh, impurities in the paper. 
So it, it is something that it's really hard to avoid. So you can um, clean the fibers during the process and be very, very precise and uh, very, um, um, how do you say, very, uh, like you can, you can work long to clean, to clean all fibers. But there are some impurities uh, which uh, remains, remain in the fibers or stay in the water that you use. For example, in Rome, we, for sure, we have a lot of calcium in the water. So you will have a lot of calcium in the, fi in the fibers. So they will be trapped. Uh, the, the, um, the atoms of calcium will be trapped inside the fibers. And with calcium also some metals that can be uh, inside the water. Okay. So impurities can uh, produce by time some damage to the paper. For example, any of you uh, ever seen the um, spots on paper, like uh, reddish spots? This is called foxing, and that depends on the composition of paper. So the impurities inside the paper can produce this kind of stains on the paper. Okay? That's a good question. <laughs> Actually, not really. Like, not all the damage can be reversible. This is uh, an important word that we use uh, very often in uh, conservation. To be reversible, it means that you can remove, or you can bring back to the initial condition, the work. Uh, and no, unfortunately, not all these damages can be removed. Yeah, so that's why it's very important preventive conservation. So not let the paper get the spots. Okay, so do something before something happens. And finally, oh no, finishing is also another uh, thing, another operation that can change the paper. And uh, for example, finishing can be beating, beating the, the, the sheet <coughs> of paper. So not just beating the pulp, <laughs> but after when it's dried, beating the paper. Beating or polish. Do you know polish? What means to make it smooth? Smooth and uh, to make the paper get uh, a shiny surface. So it can be useful if you want to give to the work um, particular aesthetic. Okay, this is something that, for example, in Japan they do a lot. Polishing, um, beating, uh, uh, they also use to wrap the paper and make it like uh, full of folds. Uh, in, it's a kind of effect, artistic effect, to, to give to the paper. And last but not least is the use. So use can also make a big difference. And why? Okay, just uh, to, uh, to briefly reassume the, what, what I said, the differences in the raw material, uh, like, a, like a, you know, we, we saw like a travel that paper made uh, from east to west, so different kind of plants according to, to the region. And then uh, the method, so different kind of tools, different kind of drying methods can give differences in the paper. I remember Helene made uh, uh, two different methods, drying methods with the hanji. Uh, she used uh, heating um, with the half of them and the sun for the, the other half and she noticed something and we will look at that and we will understand why the paper behave in two different ways. Uh, so sizing uh, can, can be made with uh, different kind of adhesives. So for example in the oriental world they use a lot starch, starch paste wheat starch paste, the rice starch paste, different kind of starch. And um, in our method, or, or, uh, in the Western, Western paper making, um, historically was uh, gelatin to be used uh, as, uh, mainly ev every time. Uh, you can find also other kind of coatings. <laughs> you never know what, what's on the paper. Uh, so impurities in the water, in, in the fibers. Uh, in the fibers, I've uh, listed here lignin and hemicellulose. The paper is uh, mainly made by cellulose, 
but inside the plant you can find also different kind of uh, composition and uh, lignin is uh, the one that it's uh, cause of um, damage of the modern paper because the paper the modern paper is basically made by wood pulp so the trees and the trees contain more lignin than other plants like cotton is 100% uh, uh, cellulose while other kind of plants can contain lignin and lignin is not good for conservation so a good quality paper has no lignin inside hemicellulose uh, is harder because uh, it's harder to avoid because it's um, mainly everywhere in every every plant but it's less uh, comparing to lignin and then uh, you can find impurities in the coating so even the glue can contain impurities or can be of uh, not good quality so all this uh, can be I will tell you how to distinguish the paper who has and who has not which has and which have not um, so pounding, polishing for finishing and the use, I was saying a different kind of use can make different other kind of pro problems in the paper so if you use for graphic art, if you use to sculpture uh, multi-material work uh, as in uh, contemporary art is, uh, can, hap can happen very very often uh, to use as a document, a paper for a document, uh, it has to have, like in the past, it has to have a, a specific quality of a, a conserv like a last for long because it needed, the document needed to, to last. So the, the good quality was, a, um, was very, very important for documentation. Uh, books and other other use like uh, fans uh, or um, screen, folding screen or um, hanging scroll, for example, um, these are like oriental, oriental objects. Um, the use is also uh, include, includes the mounting. Uh, so the use that an artist can do with paper mounting for an exhibition. The exhibition of the work of art can be also a stress for the work and the natural aging, of course, because it's organic material and, uh, as I said, like us, uh, can't last forever. Which are the causes of deterioration? Biological agents, so pests, uh, which uh, include microorganisms, uh, insects and rodents. And the insects, the majority of the, ins the species of the insects are uh, termites, uh, silverfish, and uh, woodworms. These are mainly the, the, the most common uh, species in Europe and also at other, other regions of the world. So you, ha you can have different kind of uh, coleoptera uh, depending on the region, but mainly these uh, are the insects that affect the paper because they like to eat the material. What uh, do they produce on the paper? Microorganisms produce mold. So the growth of mold, you can see from the colors and from the substrate on the paper. They live on the material and they eat the material. So they basically um, develop uh, and uh, growth, growth and develop on, and die on, on the paper. And uh, insect and rodent damage we see here. So this is uh, an example of mold uh, damage. So infection, we call it. This is an example of insect damage. The woodworm get, get inside the larva. So the small, <laughs> the small animal, not the, the adult, but the larva. They, they get inside especially in the book, you see just a hole from outside and then inside they, they dig all these little tunnels and you get all pages damages, damaged because of, uh, of the eating and uh, growing 
inside Anche nelle of the wood no? Even, uh, yeah, I, I, I've said uh, books, but this happened to photographs as well, and other kind of uh, paper materials. Yeah, we, we will talk about the why, why did they grow and uh, eat and uh, they, they have to get uh, the good environment but basically it's uh, very hard to avoid them because they, they are everywhere and they like that material. Mm, not really, there, there are some, this is also another question, they discover that some species of plant are uh, not good for insects. So some people in the past also, they made paper out of these plants to avoid the insects to get uh, attached to the paper and uh, to eat the paper. Eucalypto, for example. No, tipo antinsetticida. Uh, or, um, or you can do something in the environment to avoid uh, the growth of microorganisms or insects, like clean, for example, the, the place, clean the room, or protect your work in a way that we will show you later. And this, this is uh, the last picture, is the typical damage uh, by rats by rodents, <laughs> mouse. Other causes of deterioration are uh, physical chemical agents. So we said last week light, and uh, this, this is the measurement. Look, Lux is uh, the, the kind of uh, measure you have. We will see what is the pat parameter good for, for this kind of objects. Um, temperature and relative humidity are very, very important, and they are uh, they goes together. They go together uh, because they interfere one another. And pollutants, which are also in the air, like um, um, oxygen, or we'll see. We'll see later. I found uh, a nice video that uh, can uh, can give you the idea. Uh, so what, what that does they cause, do they cause um, alterations such as uh, oxidation, foxing, stain, different kind of stain, uh, water stain is also a physical chemical um, damage. When water goes to a surface, a paper surface which is not clean, can cause this kind of uh, water stain. So this kind of damage is like uh, the water clean the surface and transport all the dirty parts, the debris and uh, spots and uh, the, the dirty of the, the dirt of, of, the, of, uh, of the paper and create this uh, typical, typical shape. Uh, when, it hand, when, when it gets dry, you get this... Um, this uh, hmm? Waves. It's like a wave. I'll show you the in the picture. So water stain is a bit different from stain, simple stain, because stain is something that you, uh, it's not just water, it can be like ink, a stain of ink or a stain of color or a stain of coffee, <laughs> if someone uh, drank a coffee and uh, a spot uh, just fell down on the paper. Um, then you have uh, other chemical reaction as yellowing, you will find yellowing a lot on photographs, uh, fading, discoloration, especially on photographs and uh, on uh, color uh, work, graphic art work. So this is uh, related more on the media you ap apply on the paper, not just the paper. Or if the paper is colored, because you can tone the paper even in the process of uh, paper making, etc. You, you can find very many other kind of damage. This, for example, is a, a, a kind of oxidation. And you see here, it's a piece of uh, paper uh, attached to the other paper that covered this part of the document. And probably the document was exposed to light for a long time, 
So it gets oxidated. We call it this kind of uh, brownishing of the paper is called oxidation. And this um, it's um, related to the composition of paper. So the, mainly the oxygen reacts with the paper, with the cellulose of the paper, and break some um, links that are uh, in the composition. So it's not just oxidation, but can be also embrittlement. So the, the paper will be brittle after a, a long exposure to light. And this part was protected by the, the piece of paper, so it wasn't uh, affected by oxidation. Yeah, okay, this is really hard to understand, uh, but uh, oxidation uh, gets this brown color, which is not yellow, and it's typical of the support, so the paper, while yellowing is more typical to binder. A binder or an adhesive can yellow by time. For example, if you noticed, uh, like you put um, a tape, adhesive tape on a paper, like uh, 20 years ago, and today it's completely yellow. That is the adhesive of the tape, okay? And the yellow can stain the paper. So don't use tape, please. <laughs> uh, this is like a mission. Every time I say, please don't, don't use tape. Um, here you have another kind of oxidation, and this is also another kind of oxidation. This is, it depends on the ink. We call it ink corrosion. The ink, the composition of ink, ink can, make, can be made by metals. The metal, like the iron, they oxidate and they get like rusty. And the rust can embrittle the paper, so it creates this corrosion with the loss of the paper support, okay? While here, you have also the metal, um, come si dice la, la graffetta, metal clip, paper clip, thank you. And uh, you get the same, uh, the oxidation of metal and the transfer of that oxidation on the paper. And it's like a stain, it will never go away anymore. So again, don't use this. <laughs> this, is, this is an example of water stain. So this is the typical shape of the water stain. And this is foxing, an example of a wide uh, spread of foxing. This is a stain. Uh, the, the last group of uh, causes of damage are anthropic agents, so we can also damage the paper. We, we can do a lot of damage on the paper because of the use, because we, 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 we don't know how to handle the paper. We transport the paper and the, the paper get damaged because we, we weren't careful enough. Uh, theft and vandalism are also a problem especially in museum, that's why they put uh, security and uh, cameras and, um, and people who have a look at the room. Uh, neglect, uh, we don't maintain the work. We don't take care of the work. This can cause damage. So we put the work in a dirty environment. It will grow uh, mold, insects, whatever. And uh, also, and very important, and this, this is a kind of a field now in conservation, it's natural hazards. I put it here in anthropic uh, agents because it's mainly our fault. Our, what we did to the environment produce, and now we know the climate change, um, get uh, these, uh, these uh, events occur more often and often. What uh, does this mean? Uh, the deterioration will show folds, crease, tears, losses, detachment of the surface. These are called mechanical alteration because it's caused by, mainly by use. And uh, lifting, curves, etc. 
these are examples of all losses, folds, tears. This is uh, the adhesive tape. This is also caused by us. Curves when we roll a paper and then we um, unroll it. We can, uh, sh we can see this kind of uh, damage on the paper. OK, let's see this. It's a short video. <laughs> um, so different kind of So what I just said, um, so it's can, uh, part of the preventive the conservation. The so you have to be aware of what kind of damage you can, uh, the paper can show. And what you can do, it's preventive conservation. So uh, try hard not to get the paper damaged. Uh, what is preventive conservation? All measures and actions aimed at avoiding and minimizing future deterioration or loss, they are carried out within the context on or, or on the surroundings of an item, but more often a group of items, whatever they age, their age and condition. These measures and actions are the in their indirect uh, they don't, do, don't, do not interfere with the materials and structures of the items. They do not modify their appearance, which is totally different from restoration. Well, restoration is, um, uh, is direct uh, intervention on the object. And this should be the last uh, operation you can, you can uh, do to save uh, your work. Okay, you don't want to get the point, to the point to use the restoration. You should do something before. Uh, this this uh, definition is uh, like uh, internationally uh, being accepted and it was made uh, um, by International Council of Museums, uh, specifically from, uh, by the Committee of Conservation. Um, so we will look at all this operation during the this first three days. Uh, we'll, we will uh, learn how to choose uh, suitable housing materials for storage. So the furnitures also, uh, which are good and not for the conservation of paper. And uh, what we can do during exhibition. So methods of uh, mounting materials, uh, of using mounting materials, what kind of adhesive uh, to mount the work, uh, which method. And uh, it's also important, the environmental monitoring. Uh, so learn how these parameters have to be controlled and um, uh, the education to use. So be able to handle your work uh, in the proper way and to transport Back it. to the initial condition. So the first, uh, I don't use the microscope at the beginning. Uh, it's good to have a look uh, with the naked yeah. eyes. Uh, or, and I think it's the same for photography. Doro, uh, yes, I know, I know. She, she, is she sick? Yeah, she oh. already did the COVID test, but it's negative. Oh, <laughs> it's good. Maybe yeah. some air conditioning or... Yeah, so yeah. All, all the night really uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, she, she told me, and uh, I hope she will be fine tomorrow, but... Yeah, it's like three days now. Okay, but anyway, you can bring her, uh, her kit. Or at the end of the workshop, she can take it. Okay, so we, we'll have a look at these two, two different uh, paper, different paper because uh, one was made uh, using the heat, heating plate, the hot plate, and the other, the, the air, just the air. So we can uh, have a look at the paper like this. We can use a uh, light. We can see here there's a, it's a bit curves, and the surface is not smooth. Another way to look at the paper is by 
uh, radente, come si dice? Radente. 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 Well, this kind of light, gradi. 45 degrees. <laughs> Uh, or, or even uh, zero, like you look at the surface uh, and to um, underline the structure, the, structure the, the texture of the paper. So see, here, this is flat, this is not, and this is because we use the hot machine, just uh, a simple observation, nothing really particular. Another way to look at the paper is the, from, from the bottom or using a light to see through the paper. And now we see something else. We see the pattern of the mold. Can you see it? The little squares. <laughs> And we don't see really much difference uh, in, th in the thickness of the paper. So it was uh, a good distribution of fibers on the paper. Right here. Yes, here too. We can see some spots. and some impurities as well. Okay. Okay, so we, we look at the paper through the microscope and we see what, what else oh. we can see. It's not easy this way, but... Uh, <laughs> so again... Come is... Non lo vedo, aspetta. Allora, posso io muovere come dici tu guardi davanti? Ecco. Vieni comunque qui perché potrebbe servirmi. Tu prova a spostarlo un pochino, posizionalo in un punto che ti piace, però non si vede bene. Eh, vedi? Hai fatto... No, è che usarlo è, che è molto complicato. Ma si conviene Aspetta. lasciarlo senza toccarlo. No, perché va, va messo a fuoco. Allora, con questo si mette ecco. a fuoco. Aspetta, inizia. Ok, I start with. There are two kind of um, uh, magnification. So, we st I start with the most. Uh, with the less powerful. It's around the 60 per. 60. Come si dice? 60 per. 60x. Sono. Una, it's a kind of measurement that say 60 60 times more than the normal so but it's a bit uh, no forse posso aumentare la luminosità dello schermo eccolo better can you see it so here, I can't really see much of the fiber, but I can see the surface. I go deeper, enlarging more, and I can see the impurities and the, the e le fibre si vedono. Difetti, difetti, defects of the paper and a bit of the fibers, but this, this is quite a thick paper, so I should put some light underneath. <laughs> it's a very... Oh. <laughs> and now we see the fibers. So again, we can have a look at different uh, enlargement. <laughs> see? And we can take a picture.
so I can send it to you <laughs> as a memory. Yeah. See the differences in uh, distribution and different layers also, because you can see focus on uh, some of the fibers and behind other layers of fibers. This is quite thick. So we have a look at the other. Where is it? Vuoi provare a fare quella pressata? Quella sottile volevo. Ah, here. This. Ah, mamma mia, che bello. <laughs> and if you can see, the, the fibers are, some part of the fibers are transparent. This is very effective. Ah, this is very <laughs> effective. And that they are not fit, there are these bugs. like a net. Okay. So basically is this, but we can have a look at the anji because this was cotton. No, no, no. Yes, a fiber. Ah, this is anji. Okay. So we have a look at the <laughs> And uh, actually this this is quite expensive, but you can find uh, even uh, more economic you want you want to try more? Yes, sure. You want to try? Vuoi provare a far vedere una carta invece industriale, fabbricata per vedere? Sai che non l'ho portata, mi ce l'abbiamo una carta tipo moderna. Sì. Anche una buona idea. Un foglio extra strong, no? Per vedere la differenza del Devi stare molto attento a girare the turn this wheel. Guarda ah, che sì. bella. Ah. Sembrano dei quadri, guarda, sì. Sì. <laughs> Try to push uh, the little here. Uh, okay, done. <laughs> you see, there are some little... We can do something. We can enlarge the picture uh, later on. Now you try, yes. Che si vede la turn, turn, turn. Uh, I don't know. You have to try the black. Yes. That, see? The shining. It's, it's like uh, it's the way that cellulose is. It's, it's not really white. Ah, it's impurity. Impurity. <laughs> Make another shot. Oh, okay. shot. Yes. But is this the mulberry? Because the other paper was not so shiny. No, this is probably because of uh, the mulberry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's uh, right. But also that here you have uh, less quantity of fibers, so you can appreciate more the, the, the single fibers. While here, you have more density, so you can't really see it. Oh, if you turn this wheel, this uh, here, you change the polarization of light more and more. Just turn it. No, any difference? Oh, maybe because you have light from from behind. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Anyone wants to try? Ah, oh, black. You have other colors also. Hmm. A mettere a fuoco. Tienilo fermo fermo. Ah. 
qui si vede pure senza la luce in realtà. Sì. Ecco, allora, no, per mettere a fuoco, bene. allora questo è il polarizzatore. Questo, giralo un altro po' per far vedere più nero. Ok, adesso metti a fuoco con quello nero, con la rotella nera che sta qua. Ecco, no? Ecco. Un po' meglio? No? Dall'altra parte? È difficile. E poi prova a scattare. Sì. Prova a risalire. Ancora, 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 ancora. Tanto fin quando non ritorna a fuoco. Però è difficile, eh? Eccola. Ah prova a girare il polarizzatore. Dall'altra parte. See the polarization helps to find it the exact color. But it looks like white. It's because it, shi it shines. È difficile. Con quello nero devi fare fuoco. Ecco, eccolo, vai. Molto bello. Bene. spengo questo guarda la, la, la tavola di legno vuoi provare il ah. tutto azzurro? <ride> come come voglio vedere l'extra strong no? try without the light from behind try like this oh see here there is a, a button to shoot the photograph so Mm, nice. So with this, you put, focus, with this wheel, you put it here and you turn with the other hand. Light table. Yes. Mmm, bello. <laughs> you can uh, enlarge, turn uh, this black wheel more, 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 until you get focus on the screen. Oh, okay. Mm, nice. You like it? <laughs> con quella verde? No. Quella ah, che sarà sì. strong, questa qui. È quella lì, guarda, te l'hanno messa là. Ah, questa? Sì. Ah, questa qua. This is uh, for industrial. printers. Yeah, industrial paper. So, let's see. Industrial paper, you, you won't see the fibers because they're very, very short. So it's, it's quite compact. Impurities. Ah. Impurities. See, it's very thick and uh, dense. Let's go closer. Oh, lots of impurities. Si vede niente. Si vede niente. Ecco. Uh. Eh, vedi che è quasi un retino, sembra, no? Sì. You don't, you don't sì. appreciate the fibers. È molto it's, uh, it's really...
Mm. E questo. Very short fibers. I'll start with the, oh, no, it's okay. Start with this and then turn uh, the black wheel. Mm, look at the long, you want to find this Try. It's probably this one. Yes. It's, it's very thick. This, yes. this point is very thick, so you can't really go through. See, it's here. Try it to enlarge it more. Go turn the wheel. More, 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 more. More, more, more more until you get focus again sì. sono forellini oh see sì, here you can see it trapped inside the fibers oh nice take a take a picture this is really long fibers oh don't focus. <coughs> yes. Nice picture. <laughs> oh, impurities. No, it's this. Mm -hmm. No, è carta nera, cioè su ah, fibre. Sì. Yeah, yeah, here. Take a picture. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> mm. This is also nice. Try to turn a little bit the black wheel. The other way, yeah. Too much. Mm. Back. No, the other way. Yes, just a little bit more. No. They're very, very long fibers. You can take a picture if you like. But if you, if you manage to turn you you keep it uh, really still and then it's not very easy but yeah try to be yeah <laughs> good okay so see si. you you really liked it. <laughs> oh, I'm very happy, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's n not easy to have. If it's possible, I'm aligned with the mind because the paper is very different. Oh, this one, No, no, no. We try that and then uh, the last one. Uh, Start. 
Yes, yes, I will send you, I think I will send you a link uh, because it's easier. Uh, do you use a Google Drive? Okay, so I'll send you a link to Google Drive and I'll give you even the picture I took the last, last week and uh, all the PPT that I showed you. Okay? You're welcome. I think it's very important to get the material because you can uh, always need uh, to, to have a look and uh, in the future I hope uh, it will be useful. Thank you. <laughs> I, I hope you, you will uh, use it uh, in a fruitful way. <laughs> it's full of uh, impurities. Ah, yeah. Try to focus more and then take a picture. It's like a work of art. 